Hello, friends and family. Tim Johns here. Today is January 9th, 2023, and the first day of our 21-day Daniel fast. We're really excited about this year and what fasting and prayer combined can trigger or ignite in a person's life and, and in a people's life. So we devote every year to uh, be making sure that we start by seeking first the kingdom of God. And you know, that that really distinguishes a true disciple of Christ from your average uh, church attender. What we're called to do is be disciples. And what does a disciple do? Well, every morning and throughout the day, they pursue the person of Jesus. And they uh, seek first the kingdom of God. The, govern the governance of God in their life, both personally within them, between them in their relationships, and around them in their work and life. So we're making this year's theme, Seeking First the Kingdom, and I'm going to be interviewing people every day and who are going to be telling their, a story, just three to four or five minutes story, of what happened to them when they sought first the kingdom of God. And hopefully these testimonies, these stories, will inspire you to do the same thing, to uh, go hard after the Lord. You know, he, He's passionate for you. He is all about connecting with you, communing with you, attaching to you, bonding with you, enjoying you. And he just wants to have an incredible um, relationship with you throughout the day to the degree that, wow, when you show up, the kingdom advances. All right. So in my life, I've really focused on seeking first the kingdom as best I can. I don't always do it, but I, I have made that my priority in life. And I want to tell you a story of of uh, back a number of years ago that was really catalytic in my life and still to this day has is uh, informing me about what I'm called to do. We had just recently moved our family to uh, Richland Center, Wisconsin to pastor a church up there and to help re basically reboot the church. We called it Richland Center Fellowship and it was a precious group of people and, and I was there to kind of uh, establish the vision, help set the goals and the values and the culture of this family, and uh, raise up local leaders. So we were only there a couple of months, and uh, it was coming up to our anniversary, May 17, 1988. And so I decided to take Janet to a conference center for that for an overnight getaway. And that night, late at night, I just couldn't sleep, and so I was seeking first the kingdom. I was praying to the Lord about the church and in particular about children and what to do with youth. And as I was praying, uh, asking for God's wisdom and guidance, suddenly I felt the room, atmosphere of the room shift and I could feel the presence of the Lord coming into the room and I could sense actually Jesus localizing, if, you, if I can explain it that way, in the, at the end of my bed and the outline of his, of his essence, of his personhood and the power emitting off of him. And if, terrifying, wonderful, awesome, and he spoke to me kind of, I don't, the best way to say it is he, he thought rhymed with me. I could f feel his, uh, his, his heartbeat, his consciousness coming into my consciousness, and we were exchanging thoughts, and he said, you know, Tim, you've been praying many years for a revival, for a move of my spirit, like I've done in the past, in places like the Great Awakening and Azusa Street, and he goes, and I'm going to do that, but this, this, change of Christendom that you're praying for is more than you think. I'm literally going to change the way Christianity is expressed. I'm going to transition the, the expression of the church from institutionalism and organizational and even like an institutional orphanage and into a family. And I'm going to connect people in their mind and their hearts and their lives. And I'm going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And he goes, and the reason I'm doing this is because I am a family of one yet three. I'm a father and a son and a Holy Spirit. That's how I self-disclose. So I have to build my kingdom relationally in family. And he goes, and I'm going to call you to be a spiritual father. And you're going to learn how to open your heart and connect your heart to people. And you're going to speak the to identity to them and value to them. And you're going to be have the grace to connect people long-term in family. And uh, they're going to walk together in securely attached relationships and love bonds. And in the context of their connection, by osmosis, their character is going to be changed. And a, 
and a family identity is going to get formed and people are going to be inspired to love me and build Christian businesses, kingdom businesses, I should say, and kingdom marriages and kingdom arts and kingdom media. And uh, he goes, there's no place that's off limits in my kingdom. But I've got to do this through, the, through love, through organically connected hearts and lives. And so I want you to, I'm going to train you how to be a different kind of a leader. You don't just get to run programs and be a, be a speaker and an organizer and an inspirer of vision. You're going to learn how to love and how to teach people to love and how to connect people. So this, this word was so strange to me because I had not come out of a real healthy family background and I had never experienced church's family. And so uh, I go back to the congregation and I say, you know, I just visited from the Lord he said that everything that we're doing is good, but it's not where he, it's not great. It's not where he wants it to be, and so I want to gather, especially men, at the beginning, uh, because we're having the probably a serious challenge on opening our hearts and connecting our hearts up there in Dairy Country in Wyoming, uh, Wisconsin. And he says, I I, um, I want you to to uh, practice learning to be transparent and vulnerable, and share your weakness with each other. <laughs> so that's what I did. And uh, out of that experience with men and then eventually, you know, small groups and family groups, uh, the Lord directed me to uh, go back into Kansas City and, and lead the children's ministry and work with men and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And that became a big deal. And then I realized this is this is this is how God wants to rebuild his church. So it ended up in me writing my doctoral dissertation on the restoration of the spiritual family as the emerging apostolic paradigm. Wow, what a mouthful. And it became the blueprint for the forming and st the starting and forming of Rock International. We officially call the Rock Tribe. So that visitation from the Lord, which started just by me seeking first the kingdom, has transferred into me actually relocating our family down into the inner city, starting uh, churches, uh, spiritual families uh, in different places in the country. It's, it's caused me to um, challenge men and women to do a different way of relating in their marriages. It started, we started many kingdom families, missional kingdom families out of this. And so all of that uh, you know, originated from seeking first the kingdom. And now we're up here in Laramie, Wyoming, um, helping to serve this precious group of people in the Rock Laramie family. And then from this place, we serve our inner city family in Kansas City and down in El Paso and Colorado and Kirkland and everywhere else. And God's going to begin to form and start new spiritual families through spiritual parents, all with that culture of affection and joy and connecting. All that came from Seeking First the Kingdom. And, and, you know, we didn't start out with any money. In fact, we had zero money. We had to pay for the privilege of living in the inner city and serving. But, you know, to this day, every one of our needs has been met. And so that's a bit of my story. And I hope it inspires you to just, you know, reach out every little bit of a yes in your heart to the Lord. Opens the door for grace and breakthrough. So, okay, here we go. Uh 2023, Daniel fast, 21 days. And just really don't look at so much what you don't get to do. Look at the, the uh, benefit on the other side of this fast. Well, God bless you. See you tomorrow. We love you.